for tuning in to Pregnancy Pearls with me, Dr. Plenty. Today, we're going to talk about how do you choose who's going to deliver your next baby? How do you select a provider? This is really important because your provider becomes a part of your family. They're getting to see the most precious moment in your life. And so you want to make sure you choose someone you can relate to. So I'm going to give you seven tips to help you select your next OBGYN or pregnancy provider. But before we do that, please click subscribe. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. So first, let's talk about who can actually provide prenatal care. Okay, so there's someone like me that does maternal fetal medicine. A lot of maternal fetal medicine specialists do not do total care, but they work in, conjunct in conjunction with your OBGYN to provide you the best care possible. And people that need and maternal fetal medicine specialist like me would be somebody that has a high risk pregnancy complication. If you have um, an IVF pregnancy or in vitro fertilization, you need to see a maternal fetal medicine specialist at some point in your pregnancy. So anybody that has comorbidities that make your pregnancy unroutine or that need to be monitored through the pregnancy needs to see a maternal fetal medicine doctor. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have all of your care through a maternal fetal medicine specialist like me. Patients with those issues can also be co-managed between an MFM and an OBGYN um, provider. An OBGYN, which is an obstetrician gynecologist, can do your care, and they're excellent at doing it. Family medicine doctors do do deliveries, and they can do your care, but not all family medicine doctors do do prenatal care, so you would need to ask your primary care provider if, they, if you have a family medicine doctor, if they do prenatal care. Um, if you have a low risk condition, that would be an excellent option to just continue your care um, with your family medicine doctor. And then of course, you can always see a midwife, um, a certified nurse midwife is who you would need to see. I don't um, encourage you to see lay midwives just because, and not that they're not good, um, but they don't have the same regulations and guidelines that certified um, midwives have. If you have a high risk condition, you should probably not see a nurse midwife. You would need to, to um, see an OBGYN to do your care. Um, nurse midwives should do and can, are very good at doing uh, prenatal care and delivery of low risk patients. So if you are under the age of 35, you had your first pregnancy or you've had babies vaginally before without any complications, you can go to any of those three providers and you would not need to be co-managed by an MFM. So let's talk about the seven tips. So the first thing I would do um, choosing a provider is check my insurance network. There's nothing worse than finding the person you really wanna see and then you're not in the network, meaning your insurance won't cover you to see them. So either you would need to make sure you choose an insurance that's in network with that provider or go the opposite way. If you have the insurance already set, then you go on your insurance webpage and see who's in your network in your area. That's really important because you don't want to be stuck with an out of network bill, okay? The second thing um, that I would encourage you to do is ask around, ask your friends, ask your relatives, ask your neighbors that's in the area that have had babies, hey, who did you see for your care? And if they enjoyed them, then check them out specifically. The third thing that I would encourage you to do is watch their videos, go online, read their reviews. And I say read their reviews, but I do want you to take it with a grain of salt. So if you're seeing someone that, especially if they have a high risk condition, you really don't know what information they got. Usually people that have really good experiences give reviews and people that have really bad experiences are upset and so they're gonna give comments or reviews. So you have to go through more than just a couple to find out if this is a provider that's either good or bad. So a midwife may have better reviews than your OBGYN because your OBGYN is used to treating more urgent conditions that require C-sections. And unplanned C-sections can be very traumatic. And so obviously that can reflect in the reviews. So you have to take each one with a grain of salt and also watch the videos and see how you feel when you watch them. So that would be tip number three. Tip number four, check out the practices of that provider. So let's say 
you find the provider that you want. When you call to make the appointment, ask, will I see a different provider every time I come here or will I only see my provider? Um, does my provider work with other people, like a nurse practitioner that sees most of her clinic while she is out doing delivery? Or if she gets a delivery, will my clinic appointment be canceled? How many appointments does this provider have available? Am I gonna have to wait six weeks to see this provider or can I get in in two or three weeks? So you wanna know the clinical practices to see if that's something that you could tolerate. Very, very important. The fifth tip is if you know you wanna deliver at a hospital, a certain hospital, see if that provider delivers at that hospital. Just because they're in network, doesn't mean that that provider delivers at the hospital that you wanna deliver at. So let's say you wanna deliver at Woman's Hospital, for example. You want to deliver at Women's Hospital, but you don't know if that provider delivers there. So go online and say, hey, for example, I want to see Dr. Equo. Is she at Women's Hospital? Well, yes, yeah, she's at Women's Hospital and she's at Network, so you can go there. But if you want to see Dr. Tran, well, Dr. Tran doesn't deliver at Women's Hospital. So you need to make, um, make a determination like which is more important, the hospital you deliver at or the provider, and if the hospital is more important, then you need to choose another provider. The sixth recommendation is to schedule a consult. So once you find um, a provider that you think you like, go ahead and schedule a consult with that provider. And that way you can ask questions, you can see their personality, you can see if their personality meshes with your personality. And if it does, then hey, maybe that's your person. Also, ask your provider who covers for you on call and ask to meet those people as well, even if you're just introduced to them briefly. See how personal what, personable they are. And my last number seven tip is don't be afraid to switch. If you're not meshing with them after an appointment or two, don't be afraid to switch. You can switch to somebody else within the hospital. You can even switch to somebody else within the group, but know that that OB may be on call for them if you happen to switch. So just make sure you're switching early, make sure you're switching to somebody else in the network, and make sure you're switching to somebody else within the hospital system that you want to deliver. All right, I hope those tips help you. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for all the latest tips and make sure to subscribe to the blog because I do keep a little bit more in-depth information there um, for information about complications of pregnancy and how to avoid them. Until next time, bye. <laughs>